This is Leaders and Intellectual Business Community. We come to the last sections of our discussions today. Four classic types of innovations and we still have the resource person from the uh, Center for Innovations, Excellence and Leadership in the Massachusetts, Dr. Hitendra Patel. Dr. Patel, we continue our discussions that we are talking about the four classic types of innovations by Dr. Rosabeth uh, Moskanter. And uh, from the four aspects that Dr. Kanter mentioned, the strategy, the process, the structure, and the skills, according to the experience, in which aspects the company fails the most? Sure. So first, you know, we, uh, we got to accept the point. I mean, innovation is not easy. Everybody understands it. Everybody understands the importance of it but it's not easy. And the reason is it, it is all four of those things. You need to get the right strategy, you need to have the right processes, you need to have the right sort of organization structure, and you need to have the skills to do that. But what I found as a management consultant, I've worked with about 30 to 40 companies and I've helped companies implement all four of those things in play. Right. The first three are easy to do all right. because they are all mechanical. You can find an attractive place uh -huh. to play and you can actually find how you can do it. The second one is the processes. You can put the processes in place to make sure that you have budgets and cash available for ideas. And the third one is, of course, the structure. You can put the structure in the right way, too. That, that can be done. The last one is the most difficult. Because at the end of the day, it's people. People yeah. who have to talk to each other, people who have to collaborate with each other, people who have to take the risk and, and the willingness to take the risk. The leaders have to be tolerant of failures because in innovation, fundamentally, people are going to make mistakes. And, and, and the value of learning, to say I learned something. So wh what I find is the first three, though they are also difficult, they can be done mechanically through the hire of consultants and the, through the hire of um, uh, professors and others to do this kind of things or even internally. But the last one requires human beings and human beings take time to change. All right. So the leadership and the communication uh, aspects are the hardest part of this innovation uh, yeah. Yeah. You, in order for innovation to be successful, you, you need R&D to talk to manufacturing, to talk to, ma to marketing. Yes. They don't talk to each other because you, people have selected where they want to work. Uh -huh. And by their profile, they're different. All right. right? So the R&D guys want to get deep into the technology and the marketing guy wants, wants to talk about only about the customer. So that, that is one by itself natural forces. The other, other issue, of course, is that you might even have to do partnerships and channels. Now, most of us in business school have not been taught how to do partnerships. We've been taught how to do strategy, uh -huh. but partnering is like marriage. How many people, people were told how to do a marriage? <laughs> you learn in the, in, in the real time, but you don't get enough practice to do these right, things. Right, so right. it's the people. It's Ultimately, people. it's the people. Okay, last question, Dr. Patel. What kind of innovation strategy do you think uh, the most suitable for Indonesia as a developed uh, dev developing countries? Uh, is the strategy uh, different from the innovation strategy that should be done by developed countries or uh, you suggest the same strategy to be applied in this country? You know, uh, I don't think you can take a paintbrush and put a paintbrush across saying developed country or, mm, or, or, a, or, a more, or a country like the US. In the US, 90% of the companies are fast followers. Mm -hmm. They're copying somebody. Right. And they're using imitator strategies to be number two, number three in the industry, right? And only 10% are clear leaders, right. right? So if you go to a country like Finland, there's a Nokia, which has certainly emerged as a great leader in cell phones, right? Who would have imagined that in Nokia, I mean in, in Finland? Uh, who would have imagined a great company like Samsung happening in, in Korea? So I do not want to advocate that a country like Indonesia can't create a company which can ultimately be a complete leader in mm -hmm. its category. I think there are companies in Indonesia which could do that, taking advantage of the local environment. Mm -hmm. But having said that, what I've seen consistently across Mexico, Brazil, um, India, and here in Indonesia perhaps, is the tolerance for taking risk is lower. I see. And because of that, there's a tendency for people to say, has somebody else done that already? Mm -hmm. And if they have, then we should do it. Right. But if somebody else has not, it's not our job. Let's wait for somebody else to do that. So there's a... There's a preference for an imitator strategy here, mm -hmm. but the Koreans followed the imitator strategy also. But over time, they chose one clear objective in that, that they were not going to benchmark and, and, and catch up. Mm -hmm. They were going to benchmark and overtake. 
So everything right. they made, after they benchmarked Motorola, Motorola cell phone and Nokia cell phone, they said, what is it that the customer doesn't want? What does the customer really want? Mm -hmm. They made a product which was better. Mm -hmm. So it's an incremental strategy anyway. It's an incremental strategy with a very clear understanding that you have to be very fast and you need to understand the customer very well. I see. And you make the thing better. Yeah. I'd like to uh, discuss with you the uh, idea of uh, disruptive innovations from Clayton Christensen, which uh, for me makes a lot of sense that uh, uh, in developing countries like Indonesia, we should uh, use this type of strategy disruptive one uh, in which that you don't add for more features sophisticated features into a product in which also this is an incremental strategy uh, it means that uh, most developed countries will think of a product and uh, think of how to add more features sophisticated features that makes the, this product becomes uh, even better and uh, can be s uh, sold with higher price but instead thinking of how to make the current product simpler but serving the basic uh, function of the product and make it much more, more uh, marketable. That is the idea of uh, 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 disruptive innovations. Uh, and I think uh, also that this innovation strategy of our developing countries is more tailored to the needs of the you know the, the 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 market of the developing countries itself, which is which may not require such so sophisticated products than developed countries market. So this approach seems to me very much uh, logical and uh, acceptable. What do you think about it? I, I I think it's a good 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 approach where you can perhaps win in the market if you're going to compete with the multinationals. I think it's a very good strategy to, to, to use. Um, when um, in India, Tata right. uh, basically said we're going to make a $2,500 car for people who, could, who can't afford um, a $10,000 car. Um, Volkswagen, Fiat, GM all says, why would you do that? Yep. It, it was not attractive for them to do exactly. that. But, but once Tata did that and did achieve a car of that type, now imagine all the technology which can transfer up into the high-end cars. And they are the owners of Land Rover and Jaguar. Right. So they can completely transform the industry. So I think it's a very good strategy. And we see GE doing the same thing in the, in, 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 also. What GE has said is we want to bring in technologies which are unattractive in the U.S. because they can't compete. Uh -huh. So solar energy as an example. Right. You can't use solar in the U.S. because most people are used to a television, a refrigerator, a hairdryer. And no solar panel can provide enough energy to support all that. But now you take the solar panel and you go to Philippines in the villages where they have no light at night and now with the solar panel they get two more hours of light. They had nothing, right. now you get something. So the strategy, what you mentioned was you've got a great thing and you want to make it better versus you go to people who have got nothing and you actually give them something. Right. And you revolutionize the world for doing that. So I do encourage that. I think that's a very clever strategy to pursue as long as your objective is ultimately after that to go global because you've got to use that learning uh -huh. to now compete with the guys that are too expensive yeah it depends on the definition of global i mean global doesn't mean that we have to go to the developed countries they are still third world countries that uh, also you know no, uh, can can can, can uh, you know can be a big market for us yeah, dr Bobby, the perfect example is samex uh -huh. samex the mexican company who makes cement uh, a client of mine who I helped them on, on the innovation front basically recognized that it had understood how to do cement production in a, develop, in a developing country using some of the best practices from the US and other places but then they went to the Philippines they went to Egypt and I think they're, they're here in Indonesia right. also and they are the leader in cement production so, so you're absolutely correct I mean you don't have to go to the US and markets or the European markets because they're big Right. You can go to other markets which are just as attractive. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Patel. So, business leaders and intellectual business community, this very interesting uh, discussions about innovations. Of course, for those who are interested in innovating something, or for uh, those who are really looking for innovation strategy rather than imitation strategy. Uh, but, of course, in imitating, you can find innovations as well. How to imitate better.
maybe <laughs> it's an innovation anyway well so business leaders and the intellectual business community uh, the summary of this discussion is that uh, from the article of Dr. Rosa Beth Moskanta, we learned the four classic traps of innovations that is the strategy mistakes that uh, sometimes you aim too high expect too high for the new products that before it uh, was developed you already cut it down you already uh, kill the new ideas because you don't see there's a, a, a potential big revenues on it what uh, Dr. Patel said is that you have to give more time to the idea to develop but don't invest too much yet yeah. just let the idea develop and see when it is proven to be a uh, promisable uh, product then maybe you can take the action of investing it to become a pioneer product and uh, to see uh, for the next steps whether it's real, really marketable or not and the second uh, mistake that uh, Dr. Cantor said is the process mis mistake that you control too tight on the budgets you know of the uh, new product development team that this uh, Dr. Patel said that you should not uh, you should not uh, control the budget too much but there are other measurements to know that your innovation team works well not on the financial terms but on the progress of the innovation itself and the third is the structure mistakes that sometimes the uh, team of a uh, new innovation team and the existing business team are so separate because of these structure separations and they are not really taking the ideas from inside of the companies but rather than shopping for ideas outside it seems that they are really uh, two companies the different companies this is a waste of you know resources that uh, the new product team can uh, dig from the existing product divisions and this is can be solved by more uh, communications and also with uh, I think uh, with more creative in structuring and the fourth mistakes which Dr. Patel said is uh, the mistakes that is mostly found in companies that is the people skills the leaderships and the communications that you know uh, even big inventions big ideas if it is not led well if it is not communicated well then uh, the people in the company doesn't buy or don't buy the ideas then you have no way of marketing it it means if a uh, product which is a good product but it's not marketable no business revenue it is not really a good innovations okay that is uh, the summary of this uh, article that we are discussing today and let's meet again in another CEO reference program <laughs>